In our previous video, we understood about configuring VLANs in the FortiGate firewall. All right. So I have just added, uh, you know, an, uh, one more server to the existing topology. Like in the previous video, we had only this LAN zone, right, where we have configured two servers. Uh, just to, uh, you know, differentiate the topology, uh, just to, re, uh, you know, change the icon of this uh, Linux Shiny Core to a PC. All right. So going forward, let it be a PC. But still, this the configuration uh, seems to be the same. Okay, we have we have not changed the IP address that we used in our previous video. All right. So this is a LAN zone, and on top of that, now uh, we have added a uh, one more server, and let's consider that this is a DMZ zone. All right. Uh, so let's in this video let's configure a simple firewall policy to see how a traffic flows through the firewall and uh, how does it work okay how to configure a simple firewall policy to allow a traffic all right so in order to achieve that as i said last time we have this zone maybe uh, we are not going to configure a zone in this video at last we'll find uh, you know uh, the advantage of the, the limitations of going with normal uh, rules and the advantages of going with the zones okay so uh, in the next video, we'll be learning about zones. But in this video, we'll be going with the simple firewall rule only. All right. So, as said, uh, in the previous video itself, we have two VLANs created, like VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So, this video, we uh, just added one server. We are going to give this IP address to this server and this IP address to port 3. Okay. The last time, we have not given IP address on the interface. Instead, we created a VLAN and assigned an IP address. Thus, we have only one IP. So this time we are going to configure that in the this interface. Then we are going to create one uh, firewall policy to allow a transaction or communication from this. And also we can create one more uh, policy to allow a communication from DMZ to the this server. All right. Fine. Let's start, get started. So first, let me configure this DMZ server with the IP address. I think it's already configured. Yeah. So the DMZ server is having the IP address 192.168.50.100. Okay. So if in case you don't know how to configure it, anyway, we saw that in the previous video, I'll just recall it. Okay. So there is an option like as soon as you power on this machine, you'll be seeing an option like control panel. All right. Just click it. And here you'd be seeing an option network Select it, And, uh, by default, the DHCP is disabled. You can just select here and you can assign the IP address. Like in my case, I want this machine to have 192.168.50.100. All right. So I configured the IP here and it is a slash 24 network. So let it be 25.225.225.0. It would automatically take the broadcast as well as the gateway. Uh, one small changes like uh, I just want to change the, uh, you know, the gateway as per my topology. So as per my topology, the gateway is like uh, 192.168.50.1. All right. So I just need to configure 192.168.50.1 instead of 254. All right. So the gateway is configured. I just selected apply and exit. That's it. So the IP address should be configured now. Let me validate it once again. Let me enlarge it. I can use the command if config to check it. So when I use the command if config, I could see the device is having the IP address 192.168.50.100 as per the uh, lab topology. All right. So we have already discussed this. Like in order, uh, this Linux Tiny Core has a feature like uh, whenever a device is powered off, then it would lose the IP address it's configured, right? So in order to, uh, as we are going to use the same topology for the upcoming video, and we are going to enlarge this topology, I don't want this IP to be released by the device, right? So whenever this device is powered on, it should use the same IP. So I'm just giving the command file tool dot sh space dash p. So this is the command. So once you give the command file tool dot sh space dash b, then this IP address information would get saved here. All right. Fine. So we have configured the IP address and uh, we also saved it. Now it's a time to configure the FortiGate firewall. So in the FortiGate firewall, we need to configure IP address in the port number three. Let me go here and as you know, for interface configurations, we need to go to network. 
and interfaces are part of network so interfaces so already we have configured uh, port 2 right the lan port so we define the port 2 as the lan port so it has the alias name lan and we are using port 1 for a management interface right uh, so that it's having the management ip address with this ip address only we are accessing the device right maybe for a better understanding what we can do we can just add alias name here mgmt management that's it and if in case like if you see here uh, currently we have taken this ip from a dhcp and if you want to uh, configure any specific ip you can just select this manual option and you can do it any ip from your management network all right so this is how you can configure your ip address for a management interface that's fine okay see once we added the alias name now it's showing along with that so this would help us to identify the interface like which interface is responsible for what or to where it is connected like that so as per our topology we have a port 3 that is connected to dmc right so i'm just opening port 3 and the first thing like i would like to add alias name so that uh, whenever i see the port i would see the name dmc along with it for my understanding right so it also has the role like if you want to change it anything you can change it accordingly but this uh, this requirement port 3 is part of my dmc so i am selecting dmc so i need to configure ip and uh, this is a manual like statically i need to configure this particular ip 192.168.50.1 okay that's part of this network 192.168.50.1 and it's slash 24 okay all right so now uh it's using this network and we're using the first ip which th this is the ip that we have configured as a gateway right means not configured as a gateway we have declared here that we are going to use this ip as the gateway all right so for an administrative access i just enable http https ping ssh select okay that's it like now if you try to uh, ping from here to here we, we should be able to connect okay execute ping 192.168.50.100 see now we were able to connect from here to here however uh, if you try to connect from here to here like from this linux pc that is part of a lan zone or uh, i would say vlan pin this side to this dmz zone server it will not connect okay maybe i'll show you here uh, pc vlan 10 uh, it has ip so for now i'll just uh, show you with the pings and later going forward we'll be uh, you know deploying servers and we 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 would use different traffics like ftp web etc all right so if you see here this pc like this pc is having an ip 172.16.10.100 so if i try to ping um what's the ip address of a dmc server 192.168.50.100 will it reach i will not get any response because there is no valid firewall rules here allow a traffic to pass through this side to that side right so as you know whenever a traffic hits a firewall in order to allow it it should have a valid rule right so when a, when a traffic comes to the firewall basically it would check the available firewall policies and if it has any valid firewall policies to allow the traffic to pass through it only in that situation it would allow else it will never allow okay so that the packet would get dropped here itself but at the same time like if you try to ping from here to this interface like 172.16.10.1 we will get response because it's it's just an l2 connectivity right 172.16.10.1 see we're getting a response right and again when you try to ping to 20.1 we will not get any response right fine if you want to check that see we will not get any response because here we are getting a response because that's because of same network all right fine 
so our objective like our requirement is here to allow a traffic when it comes when the request is coming from this linux pc towards this dmc server the firewalls should allow the traffic okay so let's go to our firewall so now like what we need to do so when a traffic comes here like this and through port 2 from vlan 10 i should tell when a traffic comes through port 2 using vlan 10 allow the traffic to reach to this dmc server through port 3 okay so this is what the information that i'm going to feed in the security policy so based on that firewall will connect it all right fine let's just go here mm. So you can define the security policies here. Like there is an option like policy and object. Just select it. So the very first option is firewall policy. Select it. So as soon as you uh, open it, you'd be seeing one implicit role. Okay. So this is like uh, implicit DNA. As you know, all the firewall would be having an implicit DNA role. Right. So that would be available in general at the bottom. So, we'll be discussing about everything in detail in the upcoming video. This is just an overview or it's just a basic understanding of, about the uh, security policy or just to see how to configure a basic firewall rules. Okay. So, we'll be discussing more in detail in the upcoming videos. So, I'll just go ahead. I'll create a new firewall policy with the option create new here. So, we need to give any name. Uh, maybe I'll just put like VLAN 10 to dmc okay so the reason why i am putting vlan 10 is you cannot create a policy like when a traffic comes from port 2 towards port 3 allow it the reason being that is if you remember in the last video we have not configured any ip address on port 2 instead we have created two vlans and we have given ip address on the vlan only and that two VLANs are passing through port 2. So, when you have a multiple VLANs, you cannot define on port basis. Okay. So, this is what the limitation is. Like when you when you have a single network, then it's easy to configure th uh, this kind of uh, security policy. All right. When you have uh, hundreds of security policies, so or uh, i'm sorry it's not about hundreds of security policy like maybe consider that when you have uh, more than 10 plus vlans from the same zone like from the same side i would say so that is the place where a zone comes into picture okay that's fine maybe we'll be discussing about the zones in the uh, next video but in this video let's go with the same flow only so as i said we cannot directly uh, configure based on the port number because we don't have any ip address for the port all right. So if you see here, as soon as I click the option here, incoming traffic, here we need to define from where the source is coming or the incoming traffic is coming from. Like in my case, I want to create for VLAN 10, right? Like when I get a traffic from this or when a request is coming from this particular Linux machine towards this guy, I love it. Okay. So it's specific to only this PC. So that I'm just using VLAN 10. Or even if I want to, uh, you know, write a policy for both VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 to reach here to DMZ, at this moment, like at this moment, I cannot do it. Because as I said, I don't have any IP address on port 2. But there is a way to do it. That's what using zone. Okay. So before getting into zone, I just want to show you the limitations if you're not using the zone. Okay. So that. All right. So I'm just using VLAN 10 here. And the outgoing interface is, as I said, it should go to my port 3, nothing but the DMC selected here. And here we need to define which is the source and which is the destination. Okay. So for now, like as we are creating a very simple security policies, I'm not getting deep into it. I'm just going with a high level only, a basic. I'm just selecting all here. And even for destination, I'm just selecting all. And... Uh, scheduled always service all type of a service and we'll be discussing about in detail like we'll be discussing everything in detail in the upcoming videos this is just an you know sample so for now i don't need to have a nat uh, we'll be discussing about it later only 
and I want to see all sessions. Select OK. All right, now I have created one security policy to allow a traffic, like whenever it's a request is coming from VLAN 10 to DMZ, and I said to allow it always. Okay, its action is set to accept. Right. So now what I'll do, I'll just go to this Linux machine. If you remember, last time when I was trying to ping this machine with IP 192.168.50.100, actually it was not happening, right? So I'll just highlight it here for your reference. If you see here, last time when we tried to, uh, you know, ping, we didn't get any response, zero, pack, zero percentage packet loss. However, now if we try to do the same, like 50.100, right? So this is the IP address that we have configured in the server, and this is what we tried earlier. It should reach. See, now we are getting a response. So the reason why we are getting a response now, it's because like when a traffic is coming, the ICMP request is coming now. So as soon as it reaches the firewall, firewall checks whether is there is any valid traffic, valid firewall rule to allow the traffic. So now we have a rule to allow a traffic to port 3. So that's the reason it's allowed now. All right, fine. But at the same time, if you just go here and try to ping from uh, this server to the same DMZ, we will not get any response. As same, if we try to go to this DMZ server and try to initiate a traffic towards this Linux PC, obviously we will not get any response because when we define a firewall rule, we have given uh, one way, like when a traffic is initiated from this Linux machine, towards this DMC, like from this way, then it is allowed to pass through it. And when the request is sent to the DMC server and the, and only at that point of time, the response traffic is allowed to reach him back. But if you're trying to initiate a traffic, a new traffic from this DMC server towards this, it will never allow. Because in order to do so, we should have a different firewall rule. Maybe I'll show you now. Like I'll just click this DMC server. Okay. So if you see here the DMC server, see this is the DMC server, right? This machine. And currently we have IP address 192.168.50.100. Okay. If I try to ping 172.16.10.100, like this is the I'm sorry, this is the IP address of this machine, right? If I try to reach, I will not get any response because when the request is initiated from this DMC server, when it comes to the firewall, firewall will check whether do it have any valid firewall rule to allow a traffic when the packet has a source IP as this and destination means towards this. Okay, means basically when the traffic coming from this port, source port towards this destination port. So we don't have any valid policy for that. Instead, we have a policy to allow only from this side. Like uh, when a request is go coming from this side, allow it. So when a request is going, allow. And response to that request, you can allow bidirectional. Okay. So I'm not telling that you should, every time you should create uh, for outgoing one and incoming one. No, it's not the case. Like it's, it's generally, it's an bidirectional. But when in which direction the traffic is initiated that matters like the existing policy is created from this side this side to this dmz so that when a request is goes this way it's all allowed and it's bidirectional at the same time when a response is coming for the request it is allowed however if a request is newly initiated a new request a new connection is initiated from this server towards this it will never allow all right fine and also, I'll just show you from here as well, like from server VLAN, this VLAN, uh, this server. Ping. Maybe I'll just show you the IP address first, if config. If you see here, it's having an IP address 172.16.20.100. All right. So if I try to ping 192.168.50.100, it will not reach. Okay, it will get dropped here itself because when we define a firewall rule, we define only for this particular VLAN, VLAN 10. Maybe not for a specific source IP, we have defined uh, VLAN 10 here, right? If you just check it, see VLAN 10 here, which means that 
whichever traffic that's coming from VLAN 10, allow it. Maybe if you add one more device, whatever device it is, if you add one more device in VLAN 10 and if a request is sent from that device, it would get allowed. But this device traffic is going as in VLAN 20 because we have configured this interface as an access port to VLAN 20 and that's the reason. So now what we can do, let's uh, create a one more policy to allow a communication from this side to this or let's do this thing like uh, we already written a policy for, for when you initiate a traffic from this side to this side right so now maybe i'll just create a one more uh, uh you know policy to allow a communication from this dmc server to this specific uh, or this network vlan 20 network okay so firewall policy create new so this is from dmz to uh it's going to vlan 20 okay so by this way like when a request is coming this towards this it would allow but at the same time when the server uh is creating a new connection towards this it's it's when when it's creating a new request or new connection if, if it's going like this way it will not allow okay fine so incoming traffic uh it's a dmz port port 3 right and outgoing interfaces again we should not give port 2 means we should be very careful like uh, when you have multiple vlans to single interface we should be very careful we should not define the port instead even if you define the port it will not work okay if you want to check you can check it so the way how we created we adding a vlan right instead you can uh, check with the port number as well it will not work okay so i have selected for vlan 20 here again uh, let's put all the source address and destination is all service all all right accept and nat is not required for now like okay so now i have created a new policy like whenever a traffic is coming from dmz to vlan 20 uh then in that case it's set to allow all right let me go back here uh i should open my dmc so even if, if if you see here right the traffic is still initiated towards this uh dmc but still we have not received any response because as i said when a new request is initiated from this side to this side it will not respond however if a new request is coming from this side to this then it is allowed and a response to that request is allowed by directionally um server dmc server right so this is what it is now what i'll do i'll just ping 172.16.20.100 so now this time it should work see i'm getting a response from here i'm able to connect to this server and i'm getting response to it right so this is how you can simply this is a example for a simple firewall policy but the reason why i want to show show you this is like uh, in this situation we have two vlan right so vlan 10 and vlan 20 so maybe in a production you'll be having a multiple vlans right it depends on your architecture how big it is so sometimes it would be some 10 or 15 it depends completely so in that case it would be really difficult to manage a rules uh, you know, if you are going in this kind, like uh, for every VLANs, so you should have uh, on the either side also, okay, from, you should mention, maybe in the production, you will be mentioning uh, uh, this particular VLAN as a source to for that particular destination. And again, from other destination to this particular VLAN like that. So it would be very difficult to manage a policy, uh, the rules when you are going based on, you know, different vlans or coming from the same side okay so this is the uh major disadvantage like it, it's very difficult to manage so in order to make it easy or in order to make this complex process easy then it comes the zone okay so zone is basically a grouping of multiple thing in one direction like as one one group i would say so we'll be discussing about zone in the next video in detail